Right, well, here we are at Synology 2019, the UK launch. Let's check out what's inside. Okay, so here's the hardware we're seeing at the 2019 event. Of you're all familiar with this, the DS119J. It's underpowered, but let's face it, it doesn't get more discreet than that. We took out the video on the other one. On top of that, we've got that brand new 1019 Plus. For those that aren't aware, it's the one that's like the um, 918 with the extra bay on the side. A number of you have been asking about that one, and we'll be talking about that in a lot more depth later on. But the bottom here is probably the most like, sought after unit from CBIT so far. The 1619 XS Plus. It's that great quad core Xeon base NAS that's got the dual redundant power supply and NVMe slots inside. There's still no promised date on the release of that device. Do check out the videos on NC to find out more about the hardware in that. Finally, we've got a brand new one, one we haven't talked about in the channel much. Now, before you get your hopes up, it's an 1819 Plus, but it still has an Atom. But it does still kick ass quite well. It's got that quad core Intel Atom, but it's a C3000 series, and it's 8 bay device support, SHR, and of course, BTR FS. It's got four LAN on the rear, as well as expandable with two of the DX517s. Next, we've got another brand new unit, a great new 12 bay unit. It utilizes the same CPU inside as the previous unit. It is a quad core Atom. CPU, the C3528. Once again, check out the videos from last time about putting out more about the CPU and hardware inside that, but it's a much more affordable 12 bay when you look and compare it with the um, DS3617XS released last year. Finally, this is something to get excited about, and it's one that we didn't know about until recently. This is the UC300. Now, this is one of those devices where Synology have broke the mold in what they're doing. It is a dual controller device. So this is a standard 12 bay interface there on the front. It's got a Xeon based CPU inside, which is great to hear. It's got LAN ports there on the rear with the occupant occupancy to add SFP. We will detail this a great deal more, both on that compare on future videos. But what's interesting is it arrives with dual controllers inside. So while this device is running, it has two controllers built inside it that are running synchronously. The result is that if the controller or the motherboard, as we commonly refer to them, breaks, the other one is immediately there to pick it up. And due to the increased demand for iSCSI applications and iSCSI usage in NAS, something like this is invaluable. I'm surprised it's taken Synology this long to get to. We will have demonstrations taking place directly from the event that will show you more about this device. But let's carry on looking at more hardware. Hello and welcome back to Span TV. And I've just left the Synology 2019 UK launch event. We've learned a lot of stuff about software and hardware. We're going to break it across two videos. And this time I want to talk about some of the software advantages coming to you in DSM 7.0 and some of the other packages and licenses that Synology are going to be rolling out over the next six months. First and foremost, let's talk about it, DSM 7.0. It's not even available in beta yet, but there's loads of software applications being made available. So, first and foremost, DSM is going to have a new way for you to access the desktop environment, that DSM uh, GUI, the graphical user interface. You're going to be able to utilize a mobile phone to completely set up the device from scratch. So using the DS Finder application from iOS or Android will let you set the device up from the ground up with no desktop environment required. On top of that, you're going to be able to access the NAS remotely using 3D barcodes. So if you've got the user interface on a desktop of your DSM, so you're trying to log into your Synology NAS there, and you've got loads of different users, you can have one terminal station that's going to have a 3D barcode, and then use your phone, open up the application, the DS Finder app, go into the 3D barcode, scan it, and bang, you're in. Apart from that, we've seen other innovations coming in on DSM across a multitude of different applications, such as surveillance, and their own drive application, and of course, their active backup. Another interesting thing, particularly for you storage users, is learning about this new accelerated RAID that's going to be a part of DSM 7.0. They've changed the way that your RAID re rebuild times can be handled. In many cases, when you've got a hard drive that isn't completely full, the idea of rebuilding your entire array block by block, and you've got empty space in that drive, uses up a lot of unnecessary time. So what you can do is, with the Smarter Rebuild Accelerated RAID system, only have to build the parts of the drive that had data on them. And it can reduce 
um, the raid reasonable term time more than half and it's definitely something to be excited about. Another innovation is in the Synology Drive application. Synology Drive, for those that followed last year, is their one portal access point to all of your data. Now, Synology Drive is now going to support file streaming. And what that means in real terms, a number of you use third-party clouds, I'm sure, for synchronization with folders on your desktop environment. So you've got one folder that's got all of your files and then it's synchronized with your cloud platform. Now, Drive has already got a similar function to this already but this newer version, what it does is learns with caching what are the files that you access. So you can end up with the file streaming system where you have a layout of folders and files that are kilobits in size and then synchronizing the folders and files that you need. Another app that's seen an increase in development is the Synology CMS application. The CMS application, which has been around since DSM-5, has now been innovatively improved so it can cover tens of thousands of Synology. So it gives you the ability to monitor loads, and I mean thousands, of Synology NASes in your environment. And from that one control panel, you can monitor them all individually, their storage health, you can apply updates to the entire system or individual apps from the one portal access point to all of your NASes. Another thing we're hearing about is that router management software comes from Synology that's going into version 1.2, including all those rules that we'll talk about in the other video. It's supporting a whole host of new applications. Now, in my CBIT videos, I did mention about a lot of the profile and controller user interface applications coming with that software. But now we're being told that it is going to support iOS's Siri shortcuts. For those that aren't aware, it's that great little application that lets you basically shortcode a bunch of things at once using 3D barcodes. And in this case, if you've got a router set up in your home, you can uh, just give a 3D barcode on the device so all of your guests can log in very easily. Another application we'll talk about later on is the support of Live Photo, that great iOS thing where you hold your thumb on the photo and it plays. You're going to be able to do that with the photos on your nav, which is pretty exciting. And on to surveillance, and I want to talk about, of course, Synology Surveillance Station application. Now, we've already talked about the beta, or it's not in beta anymore, 8.2. But now I want to talk about where they're going next. And a lot of that is to do with DVA, forgive the note. That is deep video analytics, not uh, deep video analyzing as I thought it was. Now, DVA is the ability for the, when the video is being streamed and those IP cameras are recording all that footage, it's going to know what it's looking at. It's going to use a lot of that photo recognition and facial recognition and object recognition that you saw in moments that ported over to surveillance. So the a the great example they showed us was a standard static camera that was mildly intelligent identifying people against this new DVA appliance. So it, when the person could walk past something with a mild obstruction, most software stops seeing a person. And it's no longer the shape of a person. There's a tree or a board or a sign in front of them. But with DVA, it knows it's a person behind a tree. It knows it's behind a sign. Another great example they gave was with a, um, a camera that was pointed at a subway area. And in that subway area, uh, someone called, walked along and left a bag. God only knows what's inside it. This software was intelligent enough to know that that bag had been left there by someone. And again, you should see the example on the screen right now. Finally, there was an example using a person counter at a doorway where it automatically identified the number of people that were going through a door, both in and out. It was intelligent enough to know that. These are things that are going to be made available to you with a brand new Synology, the 1419 DBA that we'll talk about in the hardware section. Another license that's being made available to business users is SPS, Synology's Premium Service. Now this is open to excess users, that's the Synology Enterprise Level Unit that's got that Synology replacement service for five years of warranty. And what this does is give you a uh, next business working day replacement service included in this new system is a business line that you can contact via telephone lines, a live chat thing that's 24 hours a day, five days a week. On top of that, a two hour promised response time to your inquiries. And it's just another step that Synology has taken in this enterprise level area where they're trying to give business users the peace of mind. That goes a lot with that RAID technology we talked about, redundant power supplies, and when we start talking about the UC300 in the hardware section. 
finally, I want to talk about the efforts they're making towards peace of mind on drive failure. We've already talked about the new and improved rate configuration they're going for there, which reduces rate rebuild time. But now on top of that, they're talking about the business of failure prediction. They've got a whole new health user interface in place to help you know when the drive's going to fail. It isn't just a case of, oh, it's failed a smart test and it died. This notices with a lot of data that they've gathered over time about when your drive is showing tiny symptoms that there could be problems with your drive. On top of that, if you're running a system that's got a hot spare drive in place, once it starts seeing these slight indicators of poor health, it will already begin moving the parity in the data onto your hot spare rather than wait for the system to die, thereby completely eliminating rate rebuild time because the act of rate rebuild would have happened kind of passively in the background without you knowing. It's a great little innovation. Anyway, do check out the video regarding hardware that's been announced and again, there's a new four bay, there's a new rack mount, and there's a bunch of new stuff. And I haven't even mentioned the new eight bay. So do check out that video. Buy your now to span.com. Learn more and see the more wordy version of this at nascafairs.com. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.